So, so why, why specifically you? Because you're running against Kine in the primary. Oh, sure. Um, so what, what distinguishes you from the person who already has the job, right. in a sense? Yeah, so um, Congressman Kind um, is a very experienced politician. And he's very, in my appreciation, very well adapted to the system as it is in Washington, D.C. And as I was just describing, the power struggles that I see going on in our, particularly our federal and sometimes our state levels as well, is one of trying to gain control of that legislative process. And so we have this crazy system of choosing our representatives, you know, their, our campaign payment system that allows, that permits, that actually um, increases the likelihood that people with a lot of resources and power can have a very strong influence in that electoral process. And I see Mr. Kind as being very well adapted to that whole system. And, you know, he has, he's able to acquire a lot of resources for his campaigning. And you hear about people who are serving in that role who um, regret, you know, they say, I regret, I just have to spend all of my time dialing for dollars, so to speak. Uh, and I say, well, that's a shame because we should be creating good legislation and not just dialing for dollars to get reelected the next time. So, I would like to offer an alternative to that image and say, I don't want to spend, and I don't intend to spend any of my time uselessly looking for resources for campaigning. I think, ultimately, I think campaigning, campaign financing should be a public fund. You know, it should be because it's a public service to get the word out about candidates. And that should come from the taxpayers' uh, funds to pay for a limited but substantial or uh, adequate um, campaigning exercise. In any case, I think that some of the issues that, the really important issues that we need to be addressed today don't get addressed in that context because we're really not trying to solve those problems as a primary concern. We're trying to just get reelected. And because we're in that sort of frame, we can't choose, take the risks to you know, I, I, I have to tackle this problem. It may not be the most easy one to deal with, and it might cause me not to get reelected. I'll only get one term, but at least I have to do that job. All right, what do you, what do you think some of those, uh, some of the values are that you bring and some of the jobs that you see that need to be done that maybe Ron Kind is not doing, or that you can do differently than Ron Kind? Certainly, one of the most important in my heart has, is and has been the financing of our health care services in this country. We have a multitude of stockholder-owned private entities that sell us private health insurance, and it gets um, sold by all kinds of avenues, association with employers, and there's a whole historical reason that we've gotten to this point. But with that form of financing <clears throat> structure for our health care services, it's very wasteful, and it's not at all equitable. So we have a health care payment system that doesn't get the um, resources for payment of our, uh, of our services for all of our people in our communities. And um, it's also very wasteful because it has a huge overhead of administrative costs. I believe in my heart that ultimately we need a single-payer system. And of course that single-payer system, like one checkbook, would have one funding source. It's gonna have a publicly funded source, taxpayer-based source, and it will be managed and overseen by a democratic process instead of being overseen by uh, stockholders in private boardrooms. We need to get it into the public arena so that we can manage our healthcare as a communal uh, public good rather than as a private entity, private exercise that allows people to make profits off of our disadvantage when me or my children get sick. Now that's all background because I, part of the reason I ended up doing this electoral campaign is because I spent a lot of time over a year advocating for the issue of single payer health care. And at every one of my encounters with people, I would suggest we need to let our representative know. We need to call the office. We need to let them know that we really do want a Medicare for all type of single-payer healthcare system so that they can be 
um, you know, animated and feel supported in, in moving in that direction. And I could not get Mr. Kind to ever give me the impression that he was interested in that. He w would always return to the notion, well, we have to save Obamacare. We have to save the, you know, um, program <clears throat> under President Obama, uh, the Accountable Care Act. And um, it's inadequate because th the main inadequacy of that program, although it was striving to expand coverage to more and more people, it still did not cover everyone. And at the same time, it still supports and allows the ongoing profiteering that I was just describing that has no control that it could have if it was a single payer system. But Mr. Kind, when I look at where he finds his sources of, of campaign funds, a big chunk of his campaign funds come from insurance entities that would prefer not to lose this profit-making opportunity uh, that's so crucial to all of us as human beings to care for our, each other when we're sick. And so it makes sense that he's reluctant to do what I believe needs to be done. And so at a certain point you say, it's time to push, you know, push a little bit further. There are, there's, it's very good to have issues campaigning. And I've seen a lot of great people just pushing issues and trying to educate their neighbors. But I also see many times that as hard as they work, they end up being frustrated by leadership in that legislative or executive pro uh, process of our governance that ignore their concerns. And so they work so hard and then their legislators are the executive um, you know, uh, presidential, you know, president or the, in our state, you know, the state government, they change the goalposts so that we have to work harder in a different direction now. And so the only solution to that is, well, you have to go into electoral politics then and advocate for a change in direction. All right, and you will strive to make some change. Definitely. Yeah. You know, it's not pie in the sky. There is some really good legislation in, in the Congress. Mm -hmm. um, in the House of Representatives, there's H.R. 1384 that was introduced by a Pramila J. Paul representative from uh, Seattle, Washington state. And it's a great piece of legislation. And there's 116 or 120 co-signers. My representative is not one of those co-signers. But we need to get more on board to move this legislation. It's not like we have to start from zero.